doing out there? Happy May. Hello, everyone. All right. Um, I'm gonna hop right on in. Um, today is monthly challenge day, which means we're gonna pick the winners for last month. Um, there were very few submissions, so hopefully we go through this quickly, because I do need to, <laughs> I might get kicked out of my room I stream from halfway through this, so let's see how quick we can do this. Um, so just a reminder, last month was uh, magic for the subject and surrealism was a technique. I was really shocked that surrealism won, uh, especially with, you know, the lack of submissions. <laughs> um, so I, I do want to remind people that, like, when, when you vote for a subject or technique, like, that means you want to actually make it. So don't vote for something that you don't want to do. <laughs> and it seems as though people did not end up wanting to do surrealism, even though, like, 30 people voted for it. <laughs> so definitely pay attention to what you're voting for. Don't just vote for what other people are voting for, right? Vote for what you actually want to see, okay? Um, with that, we're going to hop right into this. Um... You guys in chat are going to participate by, there'll be a poll that goes up, and you'll have some time to give yourself some time to uh, pick a one out of five. Um, we go based off of the judging system that's written there, so we have, you know, can we tell that the prompts are there, is it a unique idea, um, and overall execution. You don't vote because there's one thing in the lead, so vote doesn't change a thing. Voting will change something if people stop voting for what's in the lead and you vote for what you want. <laughs> Again, people were voting for surrealism because it was in the lead. They were thinking like you think. Stop thinking like you think. That's how, that's like saying you don't vote for an election because you think that the president's going to win anyway, so why vote? And that's how we get bad presidents. <laughs> vote. <laughs> vote for what you want to do. <laughs> Please, <laughs> don't not vote. Not voting is the worst thing you can do because that'll make it obvious. Then you're stuck with 100% not what you want. Um, okay, so we're gonna go through this. There's eight submissions. Um, yeah, let's get started. I have this in order they were posted. Oh, let me see if I can read. Anybody wrote anything? Um, yeah, there's some writing for some of these. Alright, so let's get started. Um, so we have kick first. Um, this drawing here. Um, what does kick say? Oopsie, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, kick writes, um, they titled it A Simple Trick. It's with watercolor. They thought of the different tricks that a magician might perform that may seem complex but are actually pretty simple and then arranged them in a nonsensical way. They had fun pushing the bounds of their imagination. Cool. Um, all right, let me get a poll up. Is this for kick? Vote one out of five. How do you think this should rank? Um... Yeah, so we got magic, yes, 100%. We get the magician. Um, and surrealism, yes. I, this is very, this is very, um, uh, uh, what's his face? Oh my god. I have really shared him. I keep, I keep, I'm so bad at names. Um, uh, 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 uh Dolly. This is very, like, Dolly inspired. Um, for sure. Especially, like, how it's chopped off like this and how I feel like it's implied that the person is becoming the bunny when it gets chopped off and it comes through the other side, which I think is fun. Like, the layering of the bubbles, especially because you made this with watercolor, I really like the transparency that you got with those bubbles. It's really nice. Um, oh, and I, I love how this card gets, like, um, there's, like, a little 
It's like the card is bent here. Oh, what am I using as a brush right now? This right here. I like that bend a lot. Um, oh, whoa, there's a lot of... <laughs> Ooh, all right, this is tied like crazy. Um, I guess I'll give it a four to put that in the middle. Welcome, Alien Octopi. Um, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll call it a four to, like, put it in the middle of all that. Um, I like this one. Um, the one thing is I wish that the color of the background wasn't white. I wish you painted it something. Because I feel like it would stand out. Like, there's so much white that a lot of it's getting lost in the composition. And I just brought up Dolly. But he uses a lot of dark colors in his um, paintings. Um, and even his backgrounds, like, even if it's not dark, like, his sky has, like, a tone to it, you know? He doesn't just leave it blank. It's not just plain white. Um, so I think having something to pop it out would have helped a lot with this. Otherwise, I think this fits the prompts perfectly, and you did a really good job. Um, so good job, Kick. That's one out of the way. <laughs> Huzzah. All right. Let's do the next one. Uh-oh. Where'd they go? Here we go. All right. Okay, next we got Terra Goes. This one. Let's see what they wrote. All right. Um. This is their witch character who was taught magic by her father at an early age. She's not particularly proficient in magic and uses as a scare tactic. Um, yeah, so it's a character illustration within our surrealist thing. Oh, wait, they wrote something else. What did they write? Um, surprised they got it finished and submitted. That is relatable. Okay. Um, I didn't want to do that. I just want to move it. Okay. Um... So I'm going to put a poll up and then we'll get chatting. Yeah, Simply Anonymous, I agree with what you said. I'll read it out in a second. But this is Tarragos. And then we got one, two, three, four, five. Keep in mind the, um, what this, the prompts were. Um, but yeah, magic and surrealism. I think, um. Something that uh, Simply Mononymous said is that the surrealism part isn't clear, and I agree. It definitely feels like magic, but I don't know if I'm getting surreal. One thing about surrealism is, like, it's not supposed to make any sense, and I think this makes a little too much sense. It seems to me that the magic, right, this magic that we're getting, is what's um, transforming, like, the things behind it, right? And the magic has all the bugs coming out of it and stuff like that. So it makes it makes logical sense that the colors are changing the uh, objects when the colors go in front of it. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, there should be no logic to surrealism <laughs> if we're gonna do it correctly, right? Um, so maybe this only is too logical of three. Okay, I agree with that. Um, I think this is a really strong character piece. Um, however, that wasn't the prompt, <laughs> so if we ever have, we're, we're probably going to do, there's like character, I, I have character design as an idea for a subject matter at some point, so if, if there's ever character, more character focused um, subjects, I think you knocked it out of the park for that and you should come back for those. Um, but yeah, for right now, I'm just getting magic and not surreal. Um, yeah, unique, I don't know. Again, it's just a character portrait, so I'm not sure how unique it is. Um, I think the design of the character is cool. But, and like, I like the bug magic. There's something cool about bug magic. But that's, that's you know, just the very basis of what I'm looking at. Um, there's potential here, but I don't know if the potential is in or just in... But I mean... <laughs> Composition feels stiff. Yeah, I mean that wasn't the subject matter for this, so I'm not worried about that. Um, you know, if the prompt was co composition, then I'd have more of an issue with it, but it's not. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Next we have Coco. Huzzah! All right, 
Lambi says there's a concept but doesn't lean hard into it. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, okay. So this one is Coco's. Let's get that poll going. Um, and go. All right. Um, yes, we got some color love on this one. Let me, oh, I forgot to read. Let me read what Coco wrote. Um, not sure how to explain it except for I just drew whatever came to mind and that the magic is the theme. The, the I drew whatever came to mind and also that the magic of the theme is just that the light going into the star-shaped prism. Okay, that's a sentence. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna not try to decipher that. Um, so the, the magic is the rainbow. Um, the prisms and the lights are cool and wanted to have fun. They're happy how it looks. Cool. Um, oh, Coco made it in time. Hi, Coco. We're just talking about yours. Um, okay. So we have this, like, bird wizard guy. Um, I like this character's design. It's really cool. Uh, and I do, I think the prism is a really cool idea. Um, oh, we got a four. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. I like, it's funny that you use screen tones again. Because I, I put screen tones as a, as a prompt for the next one because everyone was using them. Uh, but no one picked it. <laughs> so it's like, do you guys want to use screen tones or no? <laughs> um, yeah, I like the little birds. You know, it's interesting because this is very magical, but I'm not sure how surreal it is. I think this has a very similar problem that the last one has, where the character is the focus, and it's too logical when we focus it too much on the character. Because um, it makes sense now. It makes sense where the magic is coming from, the crow jacket. I mean, he has a crow mask on. He's got a crow design. Like, the crows in, in the under him make sense logically with him as a character um so i think the surrealism part is missing um i mean something for a lot of these that the surrealists could do like to help is if you just like make it make the composition nonsensical that's a great way to you know do that um oh simply not was scared to pick screen tones because how would you do it traditionally i mean screen tones uh were traditional to begin with you can buy screen tone these screen tone papers that you cut out with an exacto knife and you put over things that's how mangas are made literally traditional it's <laughs> the screen tones exist because of traditional art <laughs> so it is possible 100 <laughs> percent um yeah i think i talked about this last week yeah, i should watch some videos of like traditional manga artists working because they they cut out their their shades of screen tones with exacto knives it's really cool what they do um you don't own an exacto knife and you're a traditional artist are you crazy that's like traditional artist 101 it's that or a box cutter <laughs> what what are you doing <laughs> i own I've had the same exacto knife since I was like in high school. <laughs> um, okay. Um, anyway, back to Coco's. Um, yeah, I think the it's a cool character, but I'm not sure if I'm getting the surreal. I think we're missing something here. Um, all right, simply anonymous. You, you we need to fund you a, an exacto knife. You need one as a traditional artist, especially because you do collage work sometimes. I don't know how you're getting fine cuts. We gotta get you that. <laughs> We're gonna fund you an exacto knife, all right? <laughs> um. All right, let's move on. Next, we have Star Timer. Bam. All right, so here's Star Timers, and it says, um, enough magic for today, Missy. I wanted to go the most colorful way. Had other ideas too, but I think this is the funniest one. Kind of threw every idea I got. I mean, it's surrealism, we go crazy. Search for flower meanings, but I forgot when coloring. <laughs> All right, let's do a poll. Um, let's go. Star Timer. Bam. All 
Alright. So, you know, it's interesting because I was just talking about how the other ones were too character focused and I didn't get surreal. This one is also character focused, but I am getting surreal. And again, I think it has to do with, well, well the chaos of this composition, 100%. The inanimate objects with the eyes and the a million hands and the... It, it feels like there's just so much happening on here. It's chaotic and none of it makes any sense. And I think that's the best way to do surrealism is chaos and insanity. <laughs> Those are the two, two things you need <laughs> to be surreal. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, we have some color love. Yeah, I really like this. Um... You have really nice color pencil control. Uh, yeah, this is this is really well done. I love how silly it is. I love how expressive even the inanimate objects are. Uh, and you can tell that even though it's a little wild, you didn't just suddenly forget that something exists. For example, um, we have like this pot here that's spewing into this other hat. Um, oh, got a three. Interesting, interesting. Um, and it's getting blocked by all these other stuff, but you still remembered that it had to continue. So everything is connected somehow, even though it's a little chaotic. <laughs> um, I I enjoy this one. I don't know. Some people don't really like this one. Uh oh. I think this one is really well done for surreal. Um, I do wish. I think a similar thing to the first one. I wish you colored the background something. That wasn't white could have just been a light color um i think it would have popped out more but i can tell you use all of your color pencils <laughs> for this um but I, I think maybe just like a light color going on for the background would be another way to pop it out a little bit um yeah this is a this is a strong strong piece it's really fun all right good job coco oh star timers good job I'm mixing everybody up today. Okay, what's next? Okay, oh, this one's cool. We got Wa next. All right. Um, what does Wa say? Um, nothing. <laughs> Wa just says, I like how this came out. <laughs> Thank you, Wa. Um, all right, let's do a poll for this one. All right. Um, I think this one's crazy strong. Um, and again, we have another character focus, but this character is like, this, I think comparative to that first witch with the, with the spider magic, um, this is a similar vibe of like this character has this, oh, and the prism, we got the light. Wow, this is wild, right? We have like a lot of similar themes going on between some of these. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say this is the most unique idea because we've seen like th three character pieces like this already. Um, but the execution of this, of like the strings tying it together and the little sparkles and the eyes, there's a lot of cool stuff happening here. And these lights, I really like how you did the lighting here. Um, so I'd say, I'd say it's, it's like baby surreal. I wouldn't say it's like absolute insanity, but this is definitely got surrealism in it. Um, ooh, it's got a five. Interesting. Um, let's see. We, the character and concept are strong, but the background seemed plain. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, that's a good question. It's like, do we need, because in the other ones, we didn't have a background. We just had colors. Um, let me pull up some of those other ones again. Um, like if we look at, um, Coco, it's, it's just a color, right? And this one, the, um, the other witch one, it's just a sky. So the question is, do you need a background for something like this? I would say maybe like, eh, there's like some glowing happening in the background, maybe like an implication of something. Um, but I don't know if it, I, I don't know if it would detract from the piece itself because it's about the character. Maybe a texture or something in the background to like pull it out. But all these other ones we've looked at so far don't have a background. They just have a space that they, like they're just in blank space. Um, 
And I don't think it needs one. I think this is character focused and I don't know if a heavily rendered background is going to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Missed opportunity. Maybe, I don't, I don't think it's a missed opportunity. I don't think that's what this piece was about. It could maybe have just been cropped in a little more and maybe we wouldn't feel that way. Like if we do this instead. Right, maybe if we're cropped in more and there's not as much empty space, you wouldn't feel as much as, like, you need to have a background. Because um, I don't really think it does. I think this works. Um, it's getting its point across. Uh, and it's really well done. Um, but again, we've seen a lot of characters just standing there. So... We'll see. I think that first one was definitely the first one and the, the fourth one were the most unique so far. Um, but there's some interesting takes on surrealism we've been seeing. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, the cropping. Yeah, I don't think it needs a background. Um, okay. Gold is next. This one's also really cool. This is interesting. We got another similar vibe of like the empty void. So we'll see what you guys think about this. Let's see what Gold has to say before we do it. Finally, a time to complete a monthly challenge. So I took inspiration from Salvador Dali as well as some other artists I can't remember the name of. Uh, the thought process of this was how some surrealists show. Oops. How some surrealists show what a person is thinking by simply showing the viewer what is going on inside their head. So with this drawing, I decided to do the same, but midway through drawing, I realized it kind of looked like there's a little apartment for these magical creatures, and that's what it became. Um, in my head, Candor for this drawing, each new magical creature that moves in equals great power for the person to have. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's do a poll. So this is Gold's. Bam. All right, um... I'll take a little zoom in. I want to see this little fairy apartment. Oh, it's so cute. I love the 3D space here. I love this. Uh, oh, we got the chromatic aberration. Yee. <laughs> um, I like this. So this is interesting because this also has a lot of empty space. So I want to know if those in chat who were having problems with the other one that had a lot of empty space, what you think about this one. Um, and this black, like, blank void that it's living in. Um, is it different to you? Is it the same? Um, because to me this one is similar to the last where it doesn't need to have a background to give me the idea. The, the lighting is so powerful and it's, you know, it's surreal. I don't need to know where this is. This could be literally anywhere and nowhere at the same time because it is surreal. <laughs> um, and yes, this is totally surrealism. Um, oh, wait, it's got a five. Wow, people like this one, too. Um, people, th all right, so it enhances the lighting, the blank space, yeah. Um, I like the idea of the head having stuff inside. That is definitely something I've seen before with Surrealists. Um, uh, Crow says, I feel like the fun stuff is all inside the mind. So that's the point, yeah. Um. Yeah. Interesting. So people like the blank space here more so than the last one, which is fascinating. Um, again, we have another character, but this one is less so about what the character is themselves and what is, you know, inside of the head of the character. So it definitely takes it different, um, you know? Um, Someone says it might still need to be cropped, maybe. It could, maybe we can do a little cropping. That could be a possibility. Um, <laughs> the rendering goes hard. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's really well made. Um, and I also like how the stuff inside the head is actually less rendered. It makes it feel, like, a lot more magical. Oh, look, the little, the little guy just moved in. Because um, it feels like the outside world is, like, the real world, and then in here we have this, like, cartoony world going on where everything is less... Well, less detailed. I think that helps. I like that a lot. Um, okay. 
Yeah, this one's strong. Good job, Golds. Um, Crow wants to see more inside of the head. Yeah, maybe if it was zoomed in a little more, we could. So that is a thought. How much body versus, like, how much of the person versus the inside of the head do we see? Um, always is a thought. Okay. Um, we're almost through this. All right. Next, we got Simply Anonymous. Who I already know is in chat. And let's read what they have to say. Uh, this is called The Street Magician. Uh, this piece has a fair amount of stuff I want to mention, okay? Um, at first it was an inking mistake, but now it's part of the character. Uh, the magic, uh, the magician with the six arms has one of their fingers missing because they accidentally cut it off when learning cool knife tricks. Um, his outfit has some butterfly elements because his multiple arms reminded me of a caterpillar. Um, the text... Um, oh, there is text, yes. The text, uh, is Lithuanian, but upside down. Um, interesting. It says, entertainer or threat on the newspaper. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, the man in the foreground is... What? Wait, the man in the foreground is actually cake, and that hat's... What? Now I'm confused. The man in the fort where? Oh, there's an eye in the hat. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean you don't you need to get an exacto knife? This is crazy. Look at all this fine cutting you're doing. You're probably hurting your hands like crazy. Um There's a hat. Oh I see. So the hat is the person and it, the actual person. The person is not real. Okay. Um, couldn't help but see some kiss references, specifically the woman's wearing makeup, uh, and a fur collar, just like the former Chris drum, uh, kiss drummer Eric Carr. Um, one of the cards is an ace card. Instead of an actual ace symbol, it's the makeup of ace freely. <laughs> oh my god, you're crazy. <laughs> the ace. Uh, um, not really about the piece, but more about the cars around it. Oh yeah, there's some cars. Um, the yellow one's a Hot Wheels Beatles Yellow Submarine. <gasps> I love the Beatles. Oh, that's sick. I want one of those. Um, okay. Making it was fun and freeing because I didn't feel like I had to follow the rules, like stuff like anatomy and stuff. I feel like I got to do whatever I wanted. Um, like if I just wanted to make the woman's body a saxophone, I could do that because who <laughs> gives a shit? It's surreal. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> Let's do a bowl. <laughs> you know, it, literally, chaos is the truth to uh, surrealism. All right, so this is um, simply anonymous. Let's pull it. Okay. Um, so this one is heavily a scene. Um, I really like the different medium for the background, how you're using, like, cutouts from like magazines or something for the like stuff in the sky um I think yeah it makes it feel like more cool I don't know what the words I'm looking for um but it, yeah it, it stands out the front stuff a lot more from the background when the stuff in the background is like photorealistic versus your cool stuff in the front um yeah, there is a lot happening here. Um, my one worry is there might be, it might be too much. Like, I mean, I know I'm not supposed to be able to tell what's happening, but I think maybe because of how you, like, how you ink with all your patches, um, it kind of blends a lot of the stuff together. And I think something that um, the this one did this this colored pencil one did is it defined where everything ended really well um you know um oh got a five nice um so yeah that's yeah um so yeah 
wonder, because I see what you did here with these two, where they, like, I like the white border. I wonder if you had made every single character on a separate piece of paper and then cut them out and then glued them, like, three-dimensionally, if that would have helped pop everything out. Because um, you got this white border here from this first cutout, but then the rest of these aren't layered. So, like, I, it would be really cool if, like, this stuff, like, um in the front also popped out. Um, like if you had drawn this person on a separate layer and like had them pop out, cause then every layer could pop out. I think that would be really cool. It would like make it a little more 3D and help us differentiate things. Like you did it here, you put white out around him to like get that fake border. But I think you could have done it everywhere um, and popped out all, all the layers. Um, yeah, 2D on a 3D, yeah, I've done layered projects with, I've taught students projects where we, we fake a 3D, you know, we pop it out. Um, they want to draw attention to the others because the magician is the focus. I think because it's so chaotic, it, there is no focus. <laughs> That's what surrealism is, kind of like, you look wherever the hell you do. Um, and it, I think it would have helped um, make it, more interesting and it would have had more layers because you already have layers going on with like the stuff in the background and then this stuff in the foreground so i want to see it more layered um anyway uh yeah i think this is totally unique and it's surreal uh and it's magical <laughs> so i think you 100 percent got it uh and i want you to get an exacto knife <laughs> please stop hurting yourself. They're not that expensive. You can find really cheap X-Acto knives. They're in like a hardware store even. You don't have to go to a craft store. I found one on Amazon for five dollars. Crap. Wow. I'm sure you got five bucks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> buy an X-Acto knife and buy a um, a like cutting board too. Those are really, you can find like a cheap you can also find like small cutting boards. Um, you can find like a five dollar. Yeah, I found one. Here we got like a ten buck one. Art cutting board, six dollars, five dollars. There you go. Easy Google search. You got ten bucks? Go buy yourself an exacto knife and a cutting board. <laughs> All right, <laughs> do it. <laughs> Hit up your local uh, Michaels or whatever, or your uh, local uh, Target will even have it. I don't know if Target is in your country, or uh, if there's a uh, hardware hardware store near you. Um, you you shouldn't be without an X-Acto knife, especially if you're going to keep making art like this. Get an X-Acto knife. You're it's a lot different. The grip you have on it is a lot easier than a pocket knife. You're you're hurting yourself by using a pocket knife. <laughs> you have so much more control. <laughs> um, Okay, I think we only have one more, guys. Um, there's no Amazon in Europe? That doesn't make any sense. Well, just Google, do what I did and Google it, and then Google Shopping will tell you exactly where to buy it from. And you can buy it from a local place. You don't have to do Amazon. I just Googled it and Amazon came up right away for me. You know? <laughs> just Google Exacto Knife and go to shopping on Google. And there you go. <laughs> Find something. <laughs> Like five bucks. The one, what is the, what's the one I found? I found one at Walmart for four dollars. Great. Beautiful. A lot of Walmart ones. <laughs> Michaels. Obviously, I don't know what companies are in your country, but there you go. Go search it and press shopping. <laughs> All right, last one. Let's go. Um,. So this one is Lambies. Um, let's read what they have to say. Um, uh, this was fun as hell to play around with. Don't know if I actually did the prompts. Uh, got an excuse to go out of my normal muted color palettes and just go absolutely feral. Nice. <laughs> um, my two goals were... Oh god, that hurts to look at, and how many filters can I shove on it? <laughs> uh, that's funny. 
There's a store called Old People Anonymous. Oh, that's so funny. Go to, go to that store. Old People. Is that telling you old people use exacto knives? That's sad. <laughs> um, all right, let's pull this. Um, so this is Lambie's. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Um, all right, so this one is interesting because this is like crazy photo filters. I think that's such a, there was an artist I shared in Inspiration that was a photographer who does like weird surreal photography. Um, what's her name? Oh, here. Uh, Ji Jiung Lee. She's a South Korean artist. Uh, she makes these really weird, um, surrealist photographs where she like stages the set to be weird and then also adds a little bit of photo editing to it um i i really like the photo editing um i've taught quite a bit of it um so i'm really i like how you went with this it's like you know what it reminds me of um uh There's like this scratch paper, scratch boards, rainbow scratch boards. Oh my God. Do you guys know these things? This is what we, I, I've used this when I taught like elementary kids because they love this thing. Oh, here, these things. You guys know these? The, the rainbow scratch boards. Oh, I got five. Nice. Um, these things are so cool. Um, like elementary kids love these things. <laughs> They're like so fun to teach the kids. Um, but it's like giving that same vibe where it's like you scratched out the black for the character. Um, that's what you were going for. Nice. I am so smart. <laughs> um, I love it. It definitely makes it look surreal. It's such a cool addition. I don't know what you did to get it that way. If you manually pick the colors or you put a gradient over the whole thing, but it's still very impressive. Um, it is so bright. Um, I love how it's like a ticket. It looks like if you printed this out, it would be the size of a ticket that you could like use to enter the magic show. Um, cause it even says like tonight only like, and it has, you know, come see the great magician it has all the stuff that makes it feel like not just a flyer, but like it's the shape of a ticket specifically. Um, so I really like the like, composition you have here um i find it funny that you only drew linny and not lynette <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> um i guess it's the linny show now <laughs> um and i also saw you posted that you got linny right after you drew this so maybe he brought you some good luck <laughs> so i'm glad i'm glad the drawing paid off <laughs> um so yeah i i like this a lot um yeah, I, I think it's fun. It's so different than some of the other character ones we've been seeing. It's like, I think there's definitely some uh, chromatic aberration on here. Some, uh, yeah, I see it. Some filters going on. Um, <laughs> reminds me when they eat funny mushrooms in cartoons. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Um, yeah, this one's strong. It's it's real surreal. Um, the only thing is like, it would be, I feel like it would be even more surreal if his body was a little messed up somehow. Like, he wasn't, like, a perfect human being. But I will take it as it is, because I think you did so much to this that it's, like, it, it's killing it. Um, all right. I think that's everybody. So, let us, I'm gonna just reorganize this a little bit. All right, um... So, as I said, very few this time. Um, now, I don't, I don't think my mods gave me there, so I might have to say mods pick later, because I don't have it just yet. Um, so I will come back with mod pick. Uh, I'll post the, I'll wait to post the winners to the server. Um, when I get my mod pick, so we can just pick the one through three for now, and then when I post to the server, you guys, we'll see the mod pick. Um, my mods are busy. It's a Wednesday. It's a weird time of week. Um, so let's do the rundown, shall we? Um, 
So let's start. I think we're going to get rid of the ones where I pointed out the lack of surrealism and how I feel like it could be pushed more. Um, so I think that would be these two where something felt missing from it. Um, surrealist wise. Um, so this is a star. Um, okay. Um, I think they're all magical, so I don't think we can get rid of something for that. Um, I think the next thing is uniqueness. Um, hmm. I think if we're going by uniqueness, this character one, comparative to, there's a lot of character ones that are just a character in space. So, hmm. I might, I might, well, I, I like a lot of these. These two are hard because they're kind of, have a similar vibe, but I feel like Gold's is, is a lot more s interesting. Oh, this is rough. <laughs> um, okay, we can get rid of Waz. I'm going to put Gold in the corner because this is like a could come back with a bang. Let's see. Um, uh oh, hold on a second, guys. Okay, sorry. <laughs> My brother asked me what kind of ice cream I wanted from the ice cream truck. <laughs> this is very important things to stop. There's there's an ice cream truck outside. <laughs> He's gonna go get for me. I would like ice cream. It's like 80 degrees outside on May 1st. All right, I want ice cream, okay? This is important, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, where were we? Um, um, what did I choose? I always get the, um, my, ooh, sorry. I think it's called the strawberry shortcake. The ice cream, the strawberry shortcake ice cream. Yeah. I love the good humor ones. They're so good. I'm going to get that one. Strawberry shortcake. Yeah, it's, it's like, what is it right now? It's 75 degrees outside. Fahrenheit, you know. <laughs> um, okay, back to this. Um, let's see. Um, so, who said something? Crow said that the first one should go. Yeah, I think compared, these three are so chaotic that I kind of agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, actually, should these, th I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should these three be the top three? Or should golds come back in? Does anyone does anyone want to give golds a chance? Or should we just keep these three that we have? What do you guys think? <laughs> well, gold should come back. Alright, if you guys want golds back, who should we remove in place of golds? Gold's come back. <laughs> All right. Um, who's going then? That's the hard question. Um, I need to check. Star. So star timers won first last time. Um. Star Timers has won first. Lambie has won first. Okay, so Lambie and Star Timers have both won first already. So that's good to know. Um, this one. Okay, 
Um, let's do this right in chat. How about this? So, um, because these two have both won first already, so I guess we'll put it between Lambie and Star Timers. Oh, has Gold won? Wait, who won? No, that was Lulamoo. That was my other mod. <laughs> Gold has not won yet. Okay, so let's put it between Star Timers and Lambie because they both won first before. Um, so, if you want Star Timers to go, to stay in, put a 1 in chat. If you want Lambie to stay in, put a 2 in chat. Alright, so 1 in chat for 1 in chat or a 2 in chat. Which one do you want to stay? Type the one you want to stay. Um, and we'll, we'll base it off of that. Whoever gets the most votes will stay. Um, uh-oh, now it's tied. I need more people to chat. <laughs> There's more of you out there. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, hold on. Uh, alright, it looks like one is winning. There's one, two, three ones, and two. Okay, so it looks like uh, Star Timers is staying. Um, I'm, legally, I'm, be, I'm legally not allowed to speak. Is <laughs> funny. Okay. Um, all right, so we know that this can't win first. So we're between these three, and I don't know mod pick. So we'll come back to that later. Um... Uh, <laughs> it's always sucks when <laughs> okay so hmm I'm thinking is I know this one can't get first Okay, we'll do another vote in chat. We got gold and we got simply anonymous. Put in chat the one you want to win, okay? Number one is simply anonymous and number two is gold. Type in chat which should get first place. Go. <laughs> Away. <laughs> Seems like one is winning. Okay, I think one won. <laughs> um, all right, so then I think that means Simply Anonymous is gonna go first. Huzzah, that it gets that out of the way. <laughs> you know, we have these two. Um, actually, do you guys like this order? Is this, is this a good order? What do you guys think? Or should we swap third and second? Because this, this feels pretty good to me. What do you guys think? I like this order. It feels correct. You know? I don't know. Oh, someone really likes star timers. Uh-oh! <laughs> Oh no, we have a fighter for Star Timer. <laughs> um, Star Timer even said that they like this. <laughs> um, wild. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> Star Timer's like, I don't care. <laughs> Put me wherever. <laughs> as long as I'm part of it. <laughs> Alright, um... Write these out. I'll post this later. I'll post the next um, prompts, but uh, I'll wait to post the winners till later. Okay. Um. I think I think we got it. All righty, guys. That's another day gone. 
Another one bites the dust. Um, so I'll tell you mod pick later today. Um, but it's looking like it may be someone who did not win any place. So where did third go? Did I just kill third place? Oh my god. <sighs> So, still up in the air for mod pick. Um, yeah, so winners, I'll, I'll reach out to you soon. So, congrats. Huzzah. Yay. Um, good job. Good job, everyone. This was so fast because it went to me. All right, next month, we got the moon for subject, or moon. Uh, and hard light for techniques, so we're doing some shading stuff. If you don't know what hard lighting is, um, Google it. <laughs> um, it is, you know, go to some pictures. It's basically like intense lighting, like this. Like crazy intense lighting. Um, so... You know, hard light, this is also hard light. It has to do with the contrast between the light and the dark. So with soft lighting, the the shadows are nice and smooth, right? Versus hard light where the shadows are harsh. Like there's a big tonal change between the lights. Um, so um, lighting is fun. And then the moon is cool because that could be your light source or not. I don't know. Have fun. Moon is whatever you want. <laughs> um... So I'm excited to see those like harsh lightings to happen. Um, our lighting is cool. Um, yeah. Excited for next month. And then I believe when is Art Fight? Is my Art Fight June or July? July. Okay. So June will still have a, um, a server challenge. And then in July, we're going to uh, take a break. Um... So, I, uh, no, no challenge in July. So June will be the last one until I take a little break, because I'm going to need it, and also I'm going to be participating in Art Fight, and I don't have the time. <laughs> I've already started redoing all of my ref streams, so it's great. Uh, <laughs> reference sheet for the June front? I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe. I could be a possibility. <laughs> Force you guys to do it. Um, all right. Well, thanks for another month guys um uh yeah no challenge in july so because i'm gonna be doing art fight and a lot of you guys do it too so i don't want to like overwhelm you guys and make you also participate in a challenge <laughs> um so um yeah with that uh that's the end of this one um quick and easy that was oh exactly an hour wow that was great um good job winners i'll contact you guys shortly and, um, yeah, posting up soon. All right.